Hey, to the hey, hey. Come on here. First, I need you to, I need you to wipe your feet there. So, and if you don't mind it, no. Stay out of my Caucasian home. But you can come in for now. Come on. My name is Kathy Y. Wilson. I am a daughter of Hamilton, Ohio, a black American Christian lesbian teacher, writer, aunt, sister, and a tremendous lover. As a writer, the visual landscape feeds my creativity. It feeds my language. It replenishes my language so I can look at something visual on the wall, on a shelf, and take it back to my desk and, and put it on the page. I started um, collecting things, uh, boy, about 25 years ago, almost 30 years ago. I was just having these forecasts of myself, like, I'm not always gonna live like this. One day I'm gonna live in a place that is just, is my personality. I don't know where it's gonna be. I don't know how it's gonna be. Um, and then shortly after that, I was moved to my dad's basement because I'd failed epically in, in Clifton. And while I was there for two years, I started buying stuff for this apartment I didn't even have. And I just started buying stuff that just appealed to me. And it turned out the very first thing I bought and had secretly always been in love with since I was a little girl was a mammy. And it's the mammy um, that's on the cover of my book, Your Negro Tour Guide. It's the very one, and it's in the bedroom. And it's about this tall, it's cast iron. And you know, it's that classic red, white apron, bandana, and this bitch is ugly. I mean, she is butt fucking ugly. Like, just blacker than a thousand midnights as Zora Neale Hurst used to stay. And she, she's just like, what? And I was saying, that's me. Like, she just, like, yeah, I feel like, I feel like I'm always like, what now? The reason why I collect the, what I, what I call Negro Bilia, and I hope I made that up. <laughs> I, I, I'm not, people, people call it black memorabilia, black collectibles, uh, and I started calling it Negro Bilia with Negro and memorabilia smashed together several years ago when I realized what I was doing. Now that is the one thing I intentionally look for. Every time we go out, thrift stores, yard sales, tag sales, estate sales, junk sales, uh, ant antique malls, and I like, I like the ugly. I really like the ugly. I like the more ridiculous a black person is depicted. Oh, I have this pair of cast iron banks, and it's usually just the chest up to the head, and the man is so black, white teeth, red, big bugged eyes and you move his hands and his eyes swing back and forth and his mouth opens and you put the you put the money i think you put the money in his mouth or in his hand and it does oh it does this you put it in his hand and, and the nigga eats the money <laughs> ah! if that's not metaphorical for black people in america it's nervy to display it and it's nervy to want it and it's nervy to purchase it and I call it liberating I call it freeing like when I see one I was like come on nigga you could come on you free let's go home I think mostly people people are always you know say man I couldn't take it all in or people who've known me the 15 years I've lived here come and like they come regularly and say you know, I'm just now seeing that, you know. I just can't see everything. It is an emotional relationship. Like, there's a story behind every single thing. It's very much to me akin to uh, building your character. <laughs> you know, how are you gonna put that together? Uh, how are you gonna be able to live with that every day? Uh, you know, what does this really say about you? What kind of choices are you making? All right, this is our kitchen, um, and it's as big as like any room in any apartment in my bed. It's weird, it's actually weirdly big to have as little prep space as it has. It's, it's almost like the appliances are an afterthought. <laughs> uh, you know, just more space for my shit, to tell the truth. I call this uh, the Def Jam 
uh, after the record label, label, label which is DEF, uh, JAM, and this is Death Jam, J A M B, Door Jam. And this is the chronological written record of, uh, of the dead, basically, by years. And I think I started this in 2012. So it's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, it wraps around 17, it's over here behind the plant. And now I got my partner in, and she's doing it now too. Here's one of my recent purchases. This is a soap grinder. So when you made your own soap to make laundry detergent, uh, you, you scrape it. And that gives you the shavings that makes the soap. So this is a very coarse piece of tin. They just punched holes all over it and nailed it to this. And then it's got an opening here for the flakes to come out. It ain't gorgeous, look at that. That's beautiful. Next to the lead paint that's chipping off and killing us all slowly. Ooh! I'm into racially offensive bobbleheads. You got them? I don't want them. It's really hip hop. See how he's nodding? Look at that. Yes, yes, y'all. Feel the beat, y'all. <laughs> I'm proud of this. And that wasn't that much work either. You just kind of, after a while, you get so much shit and it just kind of comes together. Yeah. This is what we lovingly call the blue room. <laughs> For um, obvious reasons. Um, wasn't intentional. Blue just started to build itself. And there's a particular shade of blue that I'm uh, attracted to. And, you know, this, everything that you see that's blue is about the same hue. Um, oh, here's something cool. This is an old newspaper box from the Journal News, which was the newspaper I grew up reading as a child and later was a syndicated columnist for in the 90s. And um, I asked if I could have one of these um, when I worked there. And they say, yeah, come around to the dock and get it. We're going to throw those away. So I loaded it into my Subaru Justy and had my neighbor across the street help me slog it up the steps, and it's a bar. There's not very much liquor in that. We're gonna have to do something about that. But check this out. Look at this. Racially offensive swizzle sticks. I, this may be the first piece I, I bought from Terrence Hammonds, and this is on that Chinese rag paper. This is the, it's only, I, I believe, of this design scale and color, this is the only one um, like it. And um, he knows I love this, this particular blue. And I've been calling this antebellum blue because here it reminds me of the wallpaper that's in a lot of the uh, old uh, slave plantation homes in the, in the South. Uh, you know, you get those, those grand ballrooms and those grand uh, parlors, and that was the kind of the wallpaper. And in each of these circles are, are black women. Uh, during the civil rights movement. I love that one over there. That woman's connecting with that cop. I love this one in the middle because this woman actually looks like a teenage Michael Jackson to me. <laughs> yeah. Cincinnati artists to me, it's like, it's like it, everything else in the Midwest. We get uh, short shrift unless we're on some zeitgeist trend. It's all about still East Coast, really white men, to be quite honest. And so I see Cincinnati graphic artists, visual artists, as um, extremely significant to the larger picture of art in America. And by me buying it or them loving and respecting me enough to gift me things and a lot, a lot of Cincinnati artists have just given me things. Um, I, to me, I'm saying to me and to the world when I die, I'm taking this shit seriously. You know, I'm taking, I'm taking it very seriously. So I chose Sanctuary as a very personal, uh, you know, personal thing because that's, that's, what, that's what everyone's home should be. Uh, there's an old black gospel song that says, this is a mean old world to live in all by yourself. Uh, this is a mean world in which to be alone without a friend, kindred, or even a home. 
this is a mean old world to live in all by yourself. And I grew up with that song, the quartet, the male chorus used to sing in the church. And uh, it is, it's cruel. It's cruel out there. I mean, deadly. And it really means something to me to walk in this place. Ooh, sometimes Candace and I are out in public and we'll look at each other and say, I can't wait to get home. People aren't used to living in beauty. Boom, there it is. That's the takeaway. That's what we're gonna unpack, boys and girls. College, is people, people don't live in beauty. Not a rug on the floor, not a piece of art. I don't understand that, I don't get it. So I understand how you would come here and, and feel like you were drowning if you live in the desert. BAM! I'm on 